physical touch. This is a very, 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 very crucial love language. It's not my primary, but it's something where in a sense, I do feel loved by physical touch. Um, I notice it the most when I have a father's touch. I can feel a father figure, you know, touch my shoulder. And I go, you know, a, a hug from someone important to me or just being embraced when I'm feeling low or I'm feeling crushed. That's when, in a sense, my physical touch love language comes out the most, when I'm feeling a little lower. Um, and it's interesting. We could talk about how the ways you can be blessed by physical touch with God and how it can, in a sense, strengthen your relationship with God. Again, when you understand or you recognize his embrace. This is only going to be relatable to people who really spend time with God. God will embrace you with his presence. There are moments where God's presence can be so thick where you literally are in prayer and you can feel the weight of his glory just overwhelm you. And he literally, God will love on you the way you need to be loved too. I mean, it will bring you to tears. Um, but it is a powerful thing. And not to say that it has to be that way. We can't put God in a box in that particular category. But it is very important to know God will embrace you. And I say that to somebody who may say things like, well, how can God fill my void of needing a touch, needing affection, needing an embrace God can and we underestimate the power of God. And if we would just get in his presence when he says, son, daughter, go home, we would literally feel the weight of his glory embrace us and it's a powerful thing. But here's how it can hinder. When people's touches grab our attention to the point where we not distance ourselves, but we, we pay no attention or we take our attention off God, where that touch will literally put God on mute in a sense, and anybody can attest to it, there are certain people's touches that literally feel like they put influence on you. You are literally under the influence when they touch you. For example, let's say someone's in a romantic relationship. Um, they're trying to live right. They're not really trying to pass any boundary lines. They're really trying to, in a sense, wait till marriage. Um, this is specifically for somebody, again, who values waiting till marriage and is trying to live a life conforming to the word of God. Um, this can be very difficult. You're chilling with somebody and everybody got, you have to understand, when you spend time with somebody, a connection will be made. Desires will increase. Expectations will increase. Your wants will grow. And a simple conversation turned to, I want to hold your hand. I want a hug. Turn to, now I want to kiss. Now that, that simple holding hands turned to a longer embrace. Turned to a simple kiss. Turn to now we're spending the night together. Turn to we may have fallen and ended up in sin. Something simple as one touch. And again, the flesh is a very serious thing. The Bible says the, the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war with each other. And the flesh is trying to stop you from carrying out your good intentions. So I can chill with a young lady with great intentions. But if I go past number one God's go home, um, gods don't do, gods don't say, gods don't stay, or gods don't associate, or gods don't get involved with this relationship. I'm now vulnerable. So I had a good intentions. We're going to just chill. We're going to just talk. And then I stayed longer than I was supposed to. Now our eyes are making a connection. And now we're holding hands. Now we're holding each other. We're kissing. And again, with good intentions. But now we're under the influence of our sinful nature, our sinful impulses, our flesh impulses, and something practical for, for some, something practical for somebody who doesn't know what that means. You are you're you're not really listening to God's voice now. Everything is blanked out. You're only focused on them. And again, you have hormones and you have things that you want to satisfy. Um, and now you're clouded. Your vision is clouded. The Bible says, stay vigilant, stay sober, stay focused, because the enemy is prowling around, seeking whom he may devour. As in, yo, this is not an easy walk. You got to stay focused. And I tell young men all the time, do not be in a room with no young lady past no late night. I don't care how holy you are, how much time you spend time with God. You will be weak. You will be vulnerable. One word said, one affirming word said, can turn to any kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? So we gotta be very careful on the boundaries we keep and no one's perfect. We all cross boundaries, we all mess up.
to God be the glory. There is repentance available. There's forgiveness available. There's grace and mercy available. But it's important that we refocus and we realign ourselves where we need to be. Um, but physical touch is a dangerous thing um, when we're not listening to God's voice. There are people's embrace we can welcome. If my sister wants to hug me when I'm feeling low, to God be the glory, I'm gonna love and enjoy that embrace. My mother, my healthy friendships. But again, if God, let's say, says he wants me to be single, it's probably safe to say I probably shouldn't be allowing any person of the opposite sex to be touching me. Um, especially if that's how I show and receive love, where I know I might be vulnerable after their touch. It's very crucial. Um, but again, I would definitely tell somebody with the physical touch love language to never underestimate the power of God. If he's asking you to go home, or you know you're in a place where you're fighting, um, in a sense, from receiving someone's touch, it may be because you, you already overstepped the boundary. If you don't feel it, you don't desire it. Um, if you're not in a position to be, if, you, if, you're, if you're literally living by the Spirit's power, you're strong, you're focused, but the moment you disobey God, you're gonna be weak. And don't put that pressure on yourself later, Thomas, mom, my guy, I can't believe I got here. No, you did not listen to God when he said go home or even don't associate. Um, but I would tell somebody, don't, don't ever underestimate the power of God. His embrace is so beautiful and you're gonna love it.